Okay, we've made it to the 1925 Nobel Prize in Physics, which was actually awarded jointly to two people, uh, James Frank, who you see on the left, and Gustav Ludwig Hertz, you may have heard of that last name before, uh, for their discovery of the laws governing the impact of an electron upon an atom. Think of it this way. So for a lot of years, we had to invent a lot of different things and discover a lot of different things to understand how to use them better together. Somebody had to invent the tire. Somebody had to invent the road. And now you can have the phrase where the rubber meets the road. Previous Nobel Prizes discovered that the electron existed, that you could do things with it. You could use it to get it to an excited state and bring it back down, and it would get these emissions of x-rays. Well, now what these two gentlemen did was they discovered the laws of how that electron actually makes a difference for the different atoms. So really, now what we've got is the, the atomic difference, or the atomic version of where the rubber meets the road. Now remember, they did this work in 1914. So before we get into exactly what all this work was, understand that if you're going to run this experiment in a modern physics lab, this is the equipment you would need to do it in any lab around the world. You could probably do it with a few less pieces than are shown here, but it's this type of equipment that we would use in a lab today. But this was not available to them in 1914. Nobel Prizes before this hinted at the quantum nature of things down at the atomic level. We had theories, we had papers, we had conferences, there were proceedings, there were arguments, all kinds of things. But what the Frank Hertz experiment did was it was the first electrical measurement to very clearly show the quantum nature of atoms, and therefore it just transformed our understanding of the quantum world. It first presented in 1914 to the German Physical Society, and what they did was they designed a vacuum tube for studying energetic electrons that flew through a thin vapor of mercury atoms. And what they discovered that was when an electron collided with a mercury atom, it could only lose a very specific quantity of its kinetic energy before it flew away. The energy loss corresponded to exactly 1.3 million meters per second. So if you were going 2 million meters per second, you would be going slower than that. You would only lose that very specific amount of kinetic energy. So you have this now absolute proof of what goes on Oh, down at the atomic and quantum level only happens in absolute numbers. It doesn't say, oh, okay, well, 1.5 today. No, it's always 1.3. Uh, very fundamental thing that led to an absolute breakthrough in the world of quantum mechanics. Now, when you do breakthrough science, and, and I've known people who've done it, I've, I've been involved in some that was very cutting edge. I, I've known Nobel laureates. I am not one by any stretch of the imagination, but um, one of the things when you do this level of breakthrough is you're always concerned with, and sometimes there's not necessarily all that much reception from the, uh, the scientific community because you may be disproving what other people said. And remember, quantum mechanics was still new at this point. It wasn't it was still debated in some circles. So when this, was, when this experiment was done, what this did was it, it took previous Nobel Prize winners work who were already being accepted, but the quantization of the, the this stuff inside the the the, uh, the work done here um, exactly matched the formula incorporated into the Bohr model. So Bohr was like, "Hey, awesome! You know, this is great." So now you've got a heavy hitter kind of behind you. But you also notice that this picture not only has Niels Bohr but has Albert Einstein, who was you know world famous at this point, already a Nobel laureate, uh, had his his uh, year in 1905 where he revolutionized basically everything. But after a presentation of these results, Einstein was said to have remarked, it's so lovely it makes you want to cry. So was this work well received? Well, you could say that it was, because part of it is that it's not just a theory. Now you've got this experiment that just kind of confirms a whole bunch of other people's theory, uh, which made a whole lot of people go, great, we're on the right track. And it ushered in a lot more focus into this quantum world. Now I hear somebody saying, great, you see, keep saying quantum mechanics and you keep getting really impressed by it, but Dr. Imhol, what the hell is quantum mechanics good for? Well, it brought us products like the laser, the light emitting diode, the LED you have in your TV, transistors, medical imaging equipment, electron microscopes, scanners at the grocery store, CCD cameras in your, your phone, you name it, quantum mechanics is, is kind of around us every day and we use products that came out of this space. So. Even the fiber optic coming, bringing internet to my house is is uh, is, is based in, in the quantum world. So, 
what did quantum mechanics bring us? Well, a whole lot of stuff that makes the modern world go round. So these guys back in the early part of the 20th century, the late part of the 19th century, really brought us uh, into the, the modern world in, the, in not only science, but in engineering. So I think we owe them a, a, a really nice, you know, hey, thank you very much kind of note, um, even though many of them are not with us anymore. But uh, they, they did um, uh, certainly usher in a whole new world. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, please click subscribe on the channel and click like. It does help us out with the algorithms. Uh, everybody have a great day.